Welcome to our lecture online. Here's some examples where you may not always see immediately how you can simplify a radical expression like this. Now, for example, the number 36, you realize, well, that's actually 6 times 6. And so, this, this can be written as the square root of 6 times 6, and therefore this is equal to 6. Or you might have thought of, well, the square root of 36, that can be written as the square root of 4 times 9. And so this is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 9. And that's equal to 2 times 3, which is equal to 6. Or if you don't see any of those right away, what you could do is you could take the number 36 and realize 36 is even, so I can divide it by 2, which gives me 18, which can be divided by 2, which gives me 9, which can be divided by 3, which gives me 3. In other words, 36 is equal to 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, which can be written as 2 squared times 3 squared. So, that means that the square root of 36 can be written as the square root of 2 squared times the square root of 3 squared, and therefore this is equal to 2 times 3, which is equal to 6. So notice there's a lot of different paths to get to the same final solution. Now, on something like the number 168, this technique might work just fine because you may have trouble figuring out how to separate that into two factors that may you might be able to take the square root of. So let's use this technique on the number 168. So 168 divided by 2, because it's even, is equal to 84. Divided by 2, because it's still even, is equal to 42. Divided by 2, that's equal to 20. 21. Now it's no longer divisible by 2, but it's divisible by 3. This gives me 7, which means the number 168 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 7. And so this can then be written as the square root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 7. Or this can be written as the square root of 2 squared, because 2 times 2 is 2 squared, times 2 times 3 times 7. Notice that this can then be written as the square root of 2 squared times the square root of 2 times 3 is 6 times 7 is 42. And then that means that this can be written as 2 times the square root of 42. Notice that 42 is made up of 2 times 3 times 7, which means you cannot take the square root of any of those factors. And simply this becomes 2 times the square root of 42. Again, the technique is simply to determine what that number 168 is made out of by just simply writing it as a product of all its factors. We can do the same for the number 594. So 594, since it's even, is divisible by 2. Well, that would be equal to 390, uh, that would be 397. Because if I double this, uh, not 397, how about 297? All right, if I double this, I get 594. Now notice that it's no longer divisible by 2 or divisible by 3. Oh yes, it is divisible by 3. So I can divide this by 3. So this gives me uh, 99. Because 3 times 99 gives me 297. This is still divisible by 3, which gives me 33. It's still divisible by 3, which gives me 11. So essentially, 594 can be written as 2 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 11. So this is equal to the square root of 2 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 11. Notice I have two 3's in there multiplied together. So this can be written as the square root of 3 squared with 2, a 3, and 11 remaining. So this can be written as the square root of, well, let me make it shorter here, the square root of 3 squared times the square root of this multiplied together, 2 times 3 is 6, times 11 is 66, or this can be written as the square root of 3 squared is simply 3, times the square root of 66. And so here you are with the final simplified versions of, where am I here? I guess that was equal to 6, and we got there in a number of different ways. So if all else fails and you can't see an immediate solution to the equation like you can here, if it's like this or like this, it's not a bad idea to write out those numbers as the product of its factors and then group the factors together so you can take the square root or the cube root or something like that in the fashion that we showed you. And that is how it's done.